What's going on my YouTube friends? This is Pinch Tune Danny and today we are gonna look at a brand new product I am very excited about. Nobody sent this to me, I bought it with my own cash. There is a video link to a slim ESC. It's the iFlight 50M Slick ESC which is only 8 millimeters wide. I was very excited about that ESC when it came out. I actually bought two sets and I've been flying it on this Hyperlow 6S, which is an RS Plus. And I have been flying it on this Flight One Falco X rig. Now it's open right now because I was expecting some things because I'm actually gonna make an exact copy of this quad, but with the ESC that I just got, which I'm about to show you. If you look here, this is the Slick 50 narrow ESC, which is eight millimeters wide by 45 millimeters long. The only downside to this in my opinion is how long it actually is. The Speedex LS43 to 6S. It's a 40 amp ESC with a burst current of up to 50 amps. Strangely but very curiously it uses an L4 MCU whatever that is but according to Speedex it is it equates to an F4. So just recently we had a bunch of F1 ESCs, then suddenly people started making F3 ESCs and anybody got all excited about that F4? Really? Who needs this? But I'll tell you what, this guy here still runs the equivalent of an F1 chip. Flight 1 is working up to D-Shot 3200. For that you need a fast ESC. Of course, if you buy an ESC from Flight 1, which they're never in stock by the way, they are meant and designed, the new ones, to work at the shot 3200. Now even though I don't know if anybody has tried this on Flight 1 yet, they just started going out to people, it would be very exciting to see if it can actually do the D-Shot 3200 that Flight 1 can do. I'm sure if those work just fine on D-Shot 1200, this should work on 3200, and if it doesn't, D-Shot 2400 should be just fine. So what we'll do is I'm going to open this guy up we're going to take a close look if I find my knife and we are going to um, get some measurements and look at the spec closely and look at what we've got. If we look here at the ESC, it's very interesting because it is actually one millimeter wider over here, there you go, focus. It's one millimeter wider than the I fight ESC at 9 mil, but it's shorter. And it comes with that heatsink. And the heatsink is great because a lot of you guys know that use Speedec ESCs, this heatsink is also good for prop impacts. So you don't have to run like a prop cut cover on it to keep it from getting hit and thrown components all around. It comes with pre solder wires. I don't like that. I've never liked that. Speed extends these with wires because I like to run the wires that I want and sometimes the colors that I want. So the other guy is white. Uh, come on, don't focus on my face, focus on the thing. Uh, there we go. So it comes with pre soldered wires. It comes with a pre soldered signal wire and one wire that is not soldered yet, which would be for telemetry. The, this newer kind of ESCs do not have a signal ground. They actually. Um, come with just a regular ground and I guess it does everything through that. Uh, a, a couple of ESCs uh, that I've been running for a while like some of the AirBot ones, uh, Slick 50s from iFlight and now these don't actually have a signal ground which is kind of cool I would say because it used to be that people say oh it's redundant but now it's definitely redundant. So let's take a really close look at it on the bench here and see what we've got. So here we have the ESC close up um, it has that aluminum heatsink at the top with a programmable LED here. This LED can be programmed to uh, various different colors in BL Heli 32. As you can see, the heatsink makes this a little tall, but it definitely protects the components, which is good. Uh, there are a bunch of capacitors there, more components on this side. And um, yeah, it looks good. Um, let's go ahead and take some measurements because this is the main reason apart from the 
slightly newer technology of the faster MCU. The size is key. So it's about, let's see here, about 36 millimeters long. That's the actual board. There we go. And with, it reads 9.6, but I'm sure that's because of the heat sink and whatnot. I mean, not the heat sink, the heat shooting tubing. According to their specs, it's 9 mil, which is about one millimeter wider than the um, iFlights. But the main key th here is that it's actually shorter. I like that because one worry that I have with the iFlight is that even though they're great, the longer there is, the longer they are, the more leverage. So when you break an arm, there's a bigger chance that you might snap the SC or bend it the longer it is. I don't actually tape it down. I, um, I use foam at the bottom so there's a little bit of movement in case um, there's a crash, it can move and give and not actually bend the SC and break it. But this new one being uh, slightly shorter, it would be better in the crashing department, you would say. There's a couple things that I believe still that are better on the iFlights. Um, I like that the iFly has pads on both sides. This has pads on only one side. And over here, where you have these attached, soldered in, the iFlight ones have pads on the other side, which makes it nice for attaching a capacitor, an external capacitor, because you can put the wires at the bottom and the external capacitor on the top, which is the way I did these. See the wires, the main power wires are at the bottom in blue and then the capacitors on the top pads. On this guy here, if you want to run an external capacitor that I probably would still do for success, even though it's probably not necessary, um, you would have to solder the cap to the top here. I'm actually going to skip the cap altogether. I'm going to run this on 5S and just hope it'll be fine. I think if I were going to run this on 6S, then I would be a little bit more concerned and run a cap on it. But because it's going to be up to 5S, I'm just going to hope that the caps on here are going to be enough. That's going to tell me if it's actually good or not. Um, I, I don't not like that Speedex sends them already soldered on these things because yeah, it saves a step, but sometimes I, I like to run my own wires if I want to color code them or whatever colors I, I want. But in this case, in order to keep this build fast, I'll, I'll keep them on there. I'm not going to desolder them. This uh, wire here is the signal wire. There is a telemetry wire included but it does not come soldered on. As you can see there, there's a little pad here for telemetry. Um, I'm not gonna run telemetry. I'm fine with just current through the PDB and that's fine by me. I don't need the telemetry. And these guys here, I don't even know if it actually has a shunt resistor. I doubt it does because of the space. I would have to open it up and look. It doesn't say that it has a shunt resistor in the description, so I highly doubt it. Um, the uh, iFly ones actually do, which is kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, so there we have it. They look they look really good. I I hope they are basically a step up from the iFlights in terms of technology. I'm glad more um, manufacturers are catching up on this narrow ESC idea because it brings back helps bring back the individual ESC for narrow arm builds that are so popular these days and you're not stuck having to run a 4-in-1 if you don't want to. I have nothing else for against 4-in-1s, it's just that the uh, individual ones I think run better, cleaner, and then also I run quads like this to have a very low deck. So putting another ESC in there, like in a two, two boards, makes it a lot harder. Yeah, I'm running two, uh, with this setup, uh, I'm running a PDB and then the FC on top of the PDB is so low profile that it works just fine. Well, there you have it, guys. The Speedex LS40 Narrow ESC. This is not, of course, a full review because I still need to build this out and test it, but I wanted to offer you guys a initial impression given that these are so new. Uh, once I have an actual flight video, actual you know, review that I can say oh, it flew well or not, I'll have something coming up later. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. In the meantime, yeah, thumbs up to this video. I appreciate all the support lately. This channel's been doing very well thanks to you. The more you thumbs up, the more the videos get shown, and the more you watch, the better for the channel, the more it grows. So I appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.